Jeez. So after years of coaching men worldwide, helping them to strengthen up their pelvic floor, I've identified four of the hidden risks to Kegel exercises that no one seems to want to talk about. We are flooded with online blogs and YouTube videos telling you to do this many Kegels and hold the Kegel contraction for this long and in this position. But no one is telling us the risks, how to avoid them, and most importantly, how these risks are likely making your issues much, much worse. And trust me, I was one of those people. These four risks completely slipped under my radar until I started drawing patterns and connections amongst my online clients based on what was working well and, well, what was making their urine leakage and erectile dysfunction issues worse. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Eric doctor of physiotherapy, and in today's video, we are following along the journey of Mark. Mark was one of my very first online clients back in 2019, and Mark and I fell victim to all four of these risks, delaying his progress. Now don't worry, Mark is fully recovered now and he's doing extremely well, but please learn from our mistakes. So up first, we have the risk of overdoing your Kegel exercises. Mark first came to me after he had a radical prostatectomy with the instructions from his urologist that he needed to be able to hold a Kegel's contraction for at least 20 seconds. Now, I knew very well that this was never going to happen, but where I went wrong is that I didn't vocalize this enough to Mark. I took Mark through a personalized Kegel program and I prescribed him 40 contractions per day of just a simple on-off contraction. Mark was not to hold the contraction at all. Well, a week later, when I checked in with Mark and how he was going with his program, Mark opened up to me that his urine leakage had actually gotten worse. So when I got to the bottom of things, Mark confessed that he was actually completing close to 80 Kegel contractions per day. And he was trying to hold each contraction for as long as possible. Mark was remembering what his urologist told him and through my advice, well, he threw that out the window. And instead of starting slow and focusing on quality, he ended up overdoing his Kegel contractions leading to muscle fatigue and his leakage getting worse. Okay, here's the point. For whatever reason, some urologists and other professionals will tell you that the ultimate goal is to hold a Kegel's contraction for 15 to 20 seconds. But I am here to tell you that that is not realistic and that should not be the goal. There is literally no evidence or research to show this. Now you are setting yourself up for failure here, like what happened to Mark. When you're learning to Kegel and strengthen up your pelvic floor, you need to start slowly and focus on quality, not quantity, because it's likely your pelvic floor muscles are very weak. So it's not going to do you any good overloading them, is it? Also, 20 seconds for a Kegel's hold is just not realistic. And even if you could hold for that long, it's probably not gonna benefit you. I want you to aim for a maximum hold of 10 seconds, but work your way up to that. Quality is key. Now, if I thought the risk of overdoing it was bad, what Mark and I did next was way worse. Since Mark's pelvic floor was quite weak coming out of the surgery, the only position Mark could feel a proper Kegel's contraction is, was when he was lying down. So that's how I prescribed his Kegel exercises. That's great and all, but over time, the lack of progression led to Mark building a dependency, and when I eventually progressed him to other positions, Mark preferred lying down because this is where he was the most confident, and this added quite a bit of time onto Mark's rehabilitation. Risk number two is not progressing your Kegel exercises. When you're completing your day-to-day -day tasks, either at work or around the house, you go from sitting to standing, back to sitting, and then to lying down as your natural movement during the day. Well, if you want better erections and less urine leakage, you must train your pelvic floor muscles in all of these positions as well. However, that's where things get a bit difficult because as you change the position, the contraction, it gets harder and harder to feel. However, it's crucial that you change the position and challenge your body anyways. Now with Mark, I waited too long. I wanted to build his confidence up first by progressing him from lying to sitting to standing. And this really extended his rehabilitation timeframe. So for you guys watching at home, progression is your friend. And to keep it simple, 
follow this advice to avoid this risk. Start with a simple Kegels contraction, flicking the muscle on and off. If you forget how to do a Kegels, I've made a separate video on this, I'll include it later. And I want you to do this for one week, doing these exercises in the lying down position. In weeks two and three, I want you to do your Kegels in both lying and sitting. And in weeks four and five, move on to completing all three positions, lying, sitting, and standing up. Now for weeks six and seven, progress to doing an endurance hold for two seconds for each position, and then continue on with this until you can hold a standing Kegels contraction for 10 seconds. Now this will most definitely help you avoid the risk of not progressing your Kegels, and you will strengthen your pelvic floor up so much faster by following that routine. Now I want you to go back, watch that one more time, maybe even write that routine down, you're gonna thank me later. Now, the third and fourth risk is where things really start to get serious, so prepare yourself. But first, a quick intermission. Guys, unlike everything else on YouTube, my content is not free. I actually work for you, and the way you pay me back is simply by clicking the subscribe button and the like button directly below. It's the same as going to the corner store and putting a dollar into the charity jar at the front counter and getting a candy in return. But instead of a dollar, all you have to do is click the subscribe button and the like button and I work for you. So again, my content is not free. You have to subscribe if you've watched more than one of my videos and I am calling this our gentleman's agreement, our gentleman's handshake. Also, I want your say on the topics you'd like to see on future videos, so please make sure that you comment down below what you wanna see on my channel, and I will work incredibly hard to make this happen for you. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the Gentleman's Agreement. Let's get back to the video. Okay, pull up your socks, everyone. We're getting stuck into risks number three and four. Now, a problem that Mark and I ran into during months two of his rehab program was that even though his pelvic floor muscles were continuing to get stronger and stronger, he started to get more urine leakage symptoms randomly. And that's when I learned the balance of pelvic floor strengthening with pelvic floor stretching. Now for Mark, he had been working so hard on completing his Kegel exercises that over the past two months, he had built up more and more tightness and stiffness within his pelvic floor muscles, causing his muscle fatigue to increase, which then resulted in more urine leakage. Risk number three is completing pelvic floor stretches in combination with your Kegel exercises. It would be like going on a cross-country road trip. Sure, you can put more and more fuel into your vehicle, but if you're not doing regular maintenance and oil changes on your car, the motor isn't gonna last very long, is it? The oil change version for your pelvic floor is stretching. You need to be focused on your Kegels to strengthen, and then once or twice per week, you need to throw in some pelvic floor stretching to get rid of any tightness down there, which will lead to fatigue and a worsening of your symptoms like Mark experienced. Now, once I got Mark into a good stretching routine, his progress, it started to just skyrocket and his erections and urine leakage, well, they were on their way to a full recovery. Now stick around to the end of the video and I'll point you in the right direction of my favorite pelvic floor stretches so that you can add them to your routine as well. Now that Mark and I were making good progress with the strengthening of his pelvic floor muscles, Mark was starting to get more and more impatient. Mark wanted this problem completely fixed and over with so that he can move on with his life. And at this stage, Mark went from needing six pads per day all the way down to one light pad just in case he had random leakage. And even though I was transparent with Mark from the very beginning on the amount of time it would take to fully resolve these erectile dysfunction and urine leakage issues, Mark had his own time frame in his head. And in his opinion, we were well past that point where he thought he would have been fully recovered. Guys, the fourth risk is impatience. You can't see your pelvic floor muscles, making them so much more difficult to rehabilitate compared to say, a sprained ankle. It takes time and a lot of focus and a lot of dedication to make sure that you're doing quality contractions and progressing these exercises appropriately. This can be a long process and you can expect it to take months before a full recovery. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to see incredible results before that. I'm talking about six to eight months 
and sometimes a little bit longer to see a 100% recovery where your erections work every single time and you have zero urine leakage and you can have 100% confidence that you can hold your bladder. How you avoid this risk of impatience is that you need to build your rehabilitation plan into your daily life so that these exercises, they become part of your daily routine and eventually a daily habit. If you can do this, you will get the best results. Remember, strengthening your pelvic floor muscles is a marathon and not a sprint. Now, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching to get a personalized program tailored to you and your unique situation, please check out the link in the description of this video to learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching. And you can even start with a free 20 minute video call with myself to see how this coaching might be a benefit to you. Now you can also find my online workshop to help you fix your erectile dysfunction linked in the description of this video. And lastly, if you like my YouTube videos, you are going to love my weekly emails. I only send you one per week and you can sign up for these emails in the description of the video. They're also free. Now, as promised, if you're looking for a refresher on how to complete a Kegels contraction properly, please go on and check out the video I made right here. And if you're looking for the best pelvic floor stretching routine, I have made a separate video that you can check out right here to get you started. And remember, regardless of your situation, keep going and I'll see you in the next video.